Hello. I hope you, 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 you had a great conference today and you enjoyed it. And my lighting talk is about running, doc, uh, running Plon on Docker because now we have Plon 5. So, uh, who doesn't know what Docker is? Does not. Okay, then go to docker.com. <laughs> Who doesn't know what Plon is? Go to docs.plon.org. <laughs> okay, so it's that simple. I, I mean, it should be Docker run Plon, but it's not yet. Sven is working on it. Until then, we, together with TA, created this image. So eacms.plon. And you basically run it like this. Let's see a demo because I'm sure you, does, you don't trust me. Okay, so just talk around. It's starting Zop and it should be Zop ready to handle request. And then we have Plon 5. So uh, from now on, you will not be able to say it does work uh, on my machine. Because <laughs> okay, let's see what happened here. Okay, supported Docker, uh, supported versions are because we started this year. Uh, Plon 436, 47, and 5. And if you want to run Plon 4, you just add the, the tag to run Plon 4. Now, what is Plon without add ons? So we, we added this, this feature also. So you basically you, you provide the build out X environment variable, and then you have the add on available. Or you, if you, you if you have more add-ons, you put it, you 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 can use Docker Compose or this uh, Docker Compose YML syntax, and then Docker Compose up. Still, I think you don't believe me, so no, not this one. Add-ons. Okay. the docker compose here and then we should we should do docker compose up and now you'll see that it's downloading the the image the plum 4 image and then it's installing it's getting EA faster navigation add-on and also the, the dependencies it started uh, Plon, and now we have Plon 4 with the EA Faster Navigation add-on available. I think I can skip some part of this. Okay, so we have the the navigation. What else? Okay, where where is the Docker? It's on Docker Hub. One minute. The image, the source code is uh, on GitHub, and we also created uh, all all these images zero PostgreSQL, which uh, is uh, real storage ready. Yankees, Apache, Elasticsearch, Greylog. We have all these images ready to run and customizable via environment bars. And then, so you go to Docker Hub, EACMS, and you'll see all the images. So if you have questions, contact me on Twitter or NIRC on email. Thank you. Okay, next, Paul Ronan.
will follow Andreas Jung. Yeah, better, better, better. Hi, uh, my name is Paul Ruland, and I am here today to talk to you about Sprint. Sprint is uh, more or less an invention of the... Oops, what? Sorry. Does that? Yes. Hopefully it will stay. Uh, sprints are more or less an invention of the Python and particularly also the Plum community. Um, some of you may not even know what a sprint is. There are very good definitions online. But the only definition that really matters is this. It is by far the quickest way to get into the Plum community. Um, most people have started out that are now sort of our top developers have started out by just going to a sprint, being scared as shitless, and finding out they really loved it. So coming to sprints is really nice, it's really empowering, and you should really do it. Um, there are some base rules in sprints, and especially in conference sprints. This will be a conference sprint, so hopefully we will get a lot of people, and also a lot of new people, and that means that there are some extra rules to normal sprints, which can sometimes be invitation only. This is definitely not. So everybody is welcome. No matter what your skill set is, no matter what your skill level is, if you're really good at marketing, we need you. If you're really good at <coughs> asking questions, we need you. If you're really bad at programming, we also need you because we want to train people. So everybody is welcome and everybody is useful. Uh, don't think you cannot contribute because you have the feeling, I don't know enough. That's exactly the people that we need to be asking the right questions. Maybe you can follow the documentation and see what is not uh, clear there. Write that down. Be a guinea pig. That is extremely useful. Um, tell us about your experiences. That is really useful. So everybody has something to contribute. And nobody is too important to interrupt. Um, don't give in to this rock star syndrome. Uh, anybody who is at the sprint can be interrupted if you have a question. That's what everybody is there for, to help each other. And we hope to get things uh, achieved, like concrete results. But the most important thing that we're hoping to achieve is to install learning and to install confidence in everybody who comes at the sprint. And sharing is caring. So whatever you do at the uh, sprint, please write down what you are doing. Um, we have some pre-configured th themes. One of the things we want to work on is upgrading add-ons to Plone 5. So if you've already upgraded your add-on, let us know what problems you ran into or let everybody know what problems you ran into and how you solved them. Um, start upgrading so an add-on and document where it goes wrong uh, and then write it down so that other add-on authors know what to do. Um, the second theme that will hopefully get uh, attention is uh, mock-up and pattern slip. After they had a fight last year, it's now time to kiss and make up. So um, they will hopefully have an army of fresh JavaScript developers that were trained in the last few days to help with that. Um, for the, uh, furthermore, soon there will be a new Plone.org website. <laughs> really soon now. And uh, exceptionally, the entire team that works on it um, I don't think we've ever been in the same room ever because we come from different sides of the Atlantic um, and on this conference we will be. So uh, there will be a, a new Plown Org team sprint as well um, where content should go, what content should be there. Um, there can be other themes as well but please don't start working on the next hip thing. We first have to get our ecosystem in line. So no mosaic, I'm sorry. I'm gonna be strict on that one. 
One minute. Uh, Friday afternoon, uh, we will have an introduction where people uh, want to uh, introduce topics. You can do that. And on Saturday and Sunday, we will be sprinting. We have cookies and a free lunch. Where can you find a free lunch? Nowhere. Yes, you can at the sprints. And this is for you, Andreas. So <laughs> just come there and we can all work together. Yeah, hi, I'm Andreas. Um, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on XML Director. In short, it's a unified solution for mounting storages, local and remote storages into Plone. I will show you... I will show you, for example, how to use a local file system, XML database and Dropbox and S3 integration into Plone. So let's get started. There's a plone with an empty folder. It's mapped to a local file system. In this case, it's uh, in uh, the temp, uh, temp folder. See it here. I have to type in all the micros, and <laughs> I'm too large for this table. So uh, let me just copy uh, some images from my local desktop into this folder. The local file system, it's here. That's three images. I press on reload, and you see three images directly in plone. And click on it and have a kangaroo. We can do the same with uh, XSTP. XSTP is an open source uh, XML database. Um, in this case, it's uh, accessed through WebDAV. So you can see I have a Cadaver open, it's a WebDAV client, and I can, for example, copy uh, some the same cheap X. Oh, no, I have to use a single one into the XML database, and when I click Reload, you can see that the image is accessible from the blown. Then Dropbox. Everyone is using Dropbox, but uh, right now you had not any option to <coughs> include this blown. It's taking a bit of time because the network's pretty slow. So that's my local Dropbox folder on the file system. Let me make the window a bit smaller. And I'm just dragging some files into my local uh, Dropbox folder. And you see they're synced uh, instantly. And I click on Dropbox again. It'll take some seconds because uh, the network's really slow and it takes some time for the resync. But after some time, we'll have some kangaroos sitting in Plone. Yes, that's pretty slow. Usually it takes uh, one or two seconds to load the images from Dropbox. So it's fetching some data. Let me just meanwhile uh, try something different. Uh, I have an um, Amazon S3 uh, folder mounted here. I can also, for example, import uh, pictures from my local file system directly into Plone. I go to the desktop. Uh, where are... Ah. Just let me just upload them. For example, this one here. And this is now stored on Amazon S3 in a particular bucket. So what's behind the complete magic? It's blown add-on and basically has a yeah, graphic is a big bit. Um, it's basically that you have a unique API for all uh, storages. You have uh, different drivers uh, either running locally. With basic port for WebDAV, uh, SFTP, FTP, Amazon S3. You can access OnCloud, Fresco, everything that has a WebDAV API, LocalFS, Dropbox, and in addition, you can use some uh, web service providers that basically do perform the integration with uh, other services like SharePoint, Evernote, and so on, and mount their service through WebDAV. And by doing this, you have basically uh, access to almost uh, every web storage on the net in some way. So that's it. Just a moment. Okay. Hi, I'm Manabu Terada from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, I will talk about Plon Symposium Tokyo to, uh, this year. So Plon Symposium Tokyo, uh, uh, we held on the, uh, June this year, one day conference and one day 
development sprint. Uh, six, uh, 67 participants and keynotes, uh, three keynote speech and two panel discussions and two tracks. So keynote speaker, uh, Eric Steele and Paul, thank you very much. And the second keynote is a receiver. And the panel discussion, uh, one of the panel discussions is the uh, university education. Thank you, thank you, Alexander. So, and the plans, uh, uh, we, we, we held a uh, sprint. Uh, this photo is the uh, end of closing, closing photo. And uh, this, this, this photo is the uh, lunch time. So, after the symposium, so we, published, uh, we published the article on the Japanese famous web technical uh, web magazine. So, and the Japanese user group will make a banner and a flyer for the Prom 5. So, uh, because uh, we, uh, we will make an open source conference uh, at Tokyo. So, uh, we, uh, we, make, we have a booth of the open source conference uh, at Tokyo. And we want to make uh, a new market in Japan. And the stickers. We brought the stickers. <laughs> If you want, if you want to get, so uh, contact me. So and next sponsorship is Tokyo. So I don't have any idea yet. So very hard work. So please let me know a good idea for us. I see. Okay. <laughs> So another conference is the Pro, uh, PyCon JP 2015, last weekend. So uh, I'm very, uh, I'm very hard work because I'm a, uh, a board of chair at PyCon JP and the uh, charge of sponsor. So 600 people coming us. So this year's photo. Last year, so increase increase of the Pythonista in Japan, very very increase. So, and Tokyo is a very fantastic city, you know. So, and English is almost okay, and <laughs> and not expensive now now. So because uh, the uh, 2020 uh, Olympic at Tokyo, so so many people are coming uh, at, in Tokyo, and. I think, I think safety. So please come to Tokyo. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Eric. Um, it's going to be quick. Just about a small tool I made. It's a Chrome extension, uh, which is here. You see the Plon logo. When you click on it, you get access to the Plon reload page. So you can reload easily without going to the ZMI. So you click and you reload your code. And uh, I have also added a few buttons to disable Diazo, for instance, or um, put into Diazo debug mode, or go to the ZDMI page for the current content. So it's just a small thing. It's nothing special, but uh, it's really addictive. And now I cannot work on Plone without it. So you can get it from the, the Chrome store. You just look for, you search for Plon Reloader, and you will find it. Uh, you can also fork it from my GitHub uh, repository if you want to change it or make anything. Uh, I will be glad to, to merge uh, any, any pull request. That's all. So what I want to show you is a small toy I've been playing the last month. This is a Plon 5 site, OK? I, sorry, it's in Catalan. I didn't remember that. Uh, there is a folder called uh, Prova. It's test in Catalan. There is two images, a file, and a document. And it's running in my local machine, but it can be running everywhere. And I am going to start. I don't know if you know OwnCloud. OwnCloud is a, a, like a Dropbox, but it's open source.
So I put the address of the Plone site, tests me the username and the password. And I say I want to synchronize it. And I go to my folder on cloud folder, or is it? Yeah, here. So I have sorry. I have the the content of my site here. And here I have the two images. Okay. So if I go to my site, I can see that this is the same image I'm having here. If I'm editing. It's no more Subalaka. So I saved it. I'm going to go to the web. If I find the web, yeah. Here. I'm going to refresh it and it's modified. And if I go to the, there is a document, a web page here. Let's say this document one. Yeah. This is a document, a, a page. You can edit it. Okay. Normal page. View it. And I'm going to the document. And I'm going to open the, the software that is more loved, loved by our clients, at least mine. It's called Microsoft Excel. So I have the content here, and I'm going to edit this content. I'm saying 2015. And I'm saving. Then I close it. And okay, it's going to be locked now, so it's not going to work because I just locked it. So I'm going to create a new one. Demo effect, sorry. I'm creating a document. So I need to wait a bit. Well, it's 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 uh, going to push to the doc, to the to the web page. Doc two, I have it here. Tick -a -tick -a -tick. Open Office, open Office, Excel. Oh, it's there. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to take a quick moment. I completely forgot my slides for this this morning, but um, covering the two greatest Plone 5 features, um, big omission, so I wanted to correct that. Uh, the first is docs.plone.org. Um, we've had some amazing work done on our documentation. It's really awesome. Um, uh, so we definitely need to thank Sven um, and Paul for when Sven briefly rage quit their docs team. So thank you guys. Uh, but if, if you haven't seen them yet, um, our docs have now been versioned. Uh, so everything that belongs in Plone 4 is in the Plone 4 branch. Everything that belongs in Plone 5 is in the Plone 5 branch. Um, so you know what is supported and where. Um, and probably the most important thing is they've actually removed documentation. So you won't find anything mentioned in Grok in there, uh, which is a big help to us all. Um, and another great feature, uh, it's, I'm pretty sure this is a little bit out of date, but it's, it is being, it is translatable. Um, and you'll note that, uh, Ramon, that uh, you guys are falling a little bit behind. Um, and the other thing I want to mention is training.plone.org. Um, it was really fascinating this week. I mean, last week was all the presenters uh, frantically committing uh, training material. This week, it's been the, uh, the people, actually the students in the class uh, actively uh, 
uh, improving the training docs while they were sitting in the class, which was really cool to watch. This is free courseware that you can go home and learn Plone on your own time, or you can take and sell as a Plone class. Um, this is freely available to us all. Um, so great work on that too. And that's it. Prepare Chris Lovinsky. Okay, how about that? All right. Um, it, Plone.com is the new site that we released in March. And Plone.com is different from Plone.org. Plone.com is the site we're using for marketing. So high-level decision makers, uh, people who have no idea about Plone, we would like them to come see this first. Uh, Plone.org uh, is the community site. It's where we have all of our internal news. It's where all of our developers have a lot of activity. But this is the site that we want people to come to. It's got a streamlined message about what Plone is, what the advantages of Plone are, and it's essentially a selling tool. It's to get decision makers to appreciate the really great features of Plone and then talk to providers who can give them demos and give them quotes on how to get their Plone sites going. So uh, the team that delivered Plone.com included Christina McNeil here, uh, Chrissy Wainwright from Six Feet Up, Gabrielle Hendricks Parker from Six Feet Up, Carol Gantz from Six Feet Up, and a whole bunch of people who came before, designers, Eric Rosebaum and his wife, uh, Liz Letty, Trish Ong, and of course, I'm certainly omitting people, but uh, Plone.com is the site that has the features of Plone, which you're seeing right now. Um, it also has uh, success stories, which Christina will talk about, and it has provider listings. Okay, so the success stories is a place where you can send people to see how other people are using Plone. Um, we have about 10 stories on here now. You have your thing back, um, And you can click on each story. We have a template set up so that if you want to submit your success story, most likely it is going to be me that you'll be going back and forth with to get your information up on the site. We have a template set up to help you fill it out. We want to make it as easy as possible for you to get your story up on the site. But the bottom line is that you still have to write your story. You were there, you were part of the work, and no one can tell it better than you can. Um, I can help you get that information out, but you still have to be willing to do most of the work yourself. Um, once we get more stories up here, then we will be adding uh, faceted navigation so that you can search for, your search for stories based on if it's a government or if it's nonprofit, if it's higher education, um, if it's health, and so forth. The provider section is where we need you to list yourselves here. Uh, and it's not very expensive, and that may change in the coming year, but right now it's very, very inexpensive, and you can get on here too. Uh, so these are people who are listed right now in the order of premium, premium and regular sponsors, and then your essential basic provider listings. So get your name here. If you're not here, people who are decision makers will not contact you directly. The money goes to sponsoring the Plone Foundation. So um, it's general purpose funding that the board will approve funding requests for events, for sprints, and for conference organizations and things like that. So it's, it's not going into anybody's pocket right now. Right now. <laughs> OK, we also need more demo sites. These, we only have one Plone 5 official demo site. We need more. So if you've got a, a specific use case or a vertical you want to have demoed, get it over here to us. And the last thing is that if you're interested in helping us evolve Plone.com, please let Cameron and myself know. Uh, we certainly are not going to let this site die, uh, but we could definitely use some more help. So if you're interested, track us down. Thank you.
Triathlon.com. Hello, my name is Christopher Lozinski. Tomorrow I'm talking about the ZODB. Um, <clears throat> I came to this conference because I'm very concerned about the anemic ZOPE community. And of course, this morning they were talking in the keynote about how just the changes aren't, the fixes aren't getting happen. Um, there are three things we can do about this. The first one is move to pyramid. Of course, they don't really, they kind of suppress the ZOPE component architecture. They're probably not a good solution. Second is integrate ZOPE into Plone, that's a lot of work. And the third is to resurrect the ZOPE community. The way to resurrect the ZOPE community is by pushing Grok. Grok is a brilliant development environment. In the last year and a half, I've done three applications on top of Grok, Zopachi, Bloggery, and um, Privacy V. Couldn't have done it with other tools. Really impressed by Grok. Um, I plan on releasing the Zopachi ZMI to open source and also doing a sprint this weekend on it. And hopefully we can release a new version of Grok. So anybody who wants to help resurrect Zop Grok community, I invite you to the sprint. It's less than a minute. That's four minutes for questions. Grok, G-R-O-K. It's grok.zope.org. There's Grok and ZCML. Uh, um, I'm using it. Some other people are using it. You know, we just need to do a few things to upgrade it. And it's brilliant. It's lightweight. It's, I love it. I guess Martin Espinelli who wasn't here is a big fan of it too. Any three more minutes of questions or see you all at the sprint then. Okay. <laughs> Robert Nye. Uh, hello. Um, in addition to the talks uh, by Peter and um, by Peters about music and. Uh, Philip, sorry. <laughs> and uh, in addition to some discussion which uh, have been uh, occurred a few months ago on the mailing list about uh, an API for dexterity behaviors, and in addition to a real world problem Peter was facing with a project, um, we were talking about what uh, might be a possible scenario for content creation in the future of Plone. So, we, what's insufficient right now, uh, content needs to be a predefined type. Um, minor modifications require a new content type. Several different content types providing similar functiona functionality, like a file and the image. And users coming from other CMS ask for block editing facilities. But there is good news. Uh, we have Mosaic now. Um, we have dexterity behaviors. Behaviors can have its own set of views, viewlets, and tiles bound to interfaces like we know uh, from, from regular content uh, creation. Uh, and we can assign these behaviors by content instance. This is something not very much people uh, know about. There is a, pic a package, JC was working on it, and, um, and Hannes was working on it, and I have been working on it. Finally, we use it for a shop integration package. And how do you expect, or how do I expect you to use it then? Uh, it would be adding content as you are familiar with it, and then you're landing at the Mosaic editor and get uh, simply the behaviors and assign it to this item, and then you can, you're done, actually. Sounds good so far, and now. So, uh, first, we would need to agree that this, is, this might be the way to go. Uh, and then we would need to integrate uh, collective instance behavior to core dexterity. And uh, dexterity ad forms would, be, uh, would, would, would need a mechanism where some can define a set of basic behaviors which get applied always when content is created. And blown up mosaic needs to get tiles bound to behaviors. There already exists an issue on GitHub uh, where this is mentioned. And what would we have then? Uh, Plone might provide two content types out of the box then. This will be folder and item. Every aspect of content, metadata, rich text, files, images, geolocation, commenting, staging, whatever, um, is applied only where it is desired, by instance and not by type. 
And every aspect of content is visually organized as tiles in the layout. And uh, to be a little more moderate in my expectations about the next Plone version, maybe it's called then Plone 6. So, sounds promising. It's up on you. Uh, just an idea. Thanks for listening. Uh, hi, I'd like to talk uh, briefly about Zest Releaser. Uh, who here in, in this room is using Zest Releaser? Is anyone still using Yarn.make release? Still a few. Anything else? Collective Releaser? Anyway, uh, Zest Releaser is on GitHub, uh, not in the Collective, but in the Zest Software uh, repository. Uh, it's still actively being maintained by me and my brother Reinoud, who is no longer working at Zest, but he still has access. Uh, there are, yeah, in the course of a few years, uh, several options have been added. And, but I could also do a short demo, if this is visible. So normally you do a full release, uh, it asks you a few questions, uh, you can run uh, Pyroma on the package, which does some checks like, hey, mostly is your setup.py, is that uh, correct? And you run a, a manifest check, hey, is every file going to end up in a package that you create? And then you say, okay, update the version. Uh, it currently also warns if your change log only has uh, basically nothing in it. And in this case, I'm going to say, well, okay, I'll continue. Uh, it updates the version, tags it, uh, and check out the tag for PyPI. Does lots of stuff. Maybe you saw something red flashing by, which might be an error. Which you could look at. In this case, I'm going to upload to uh, the test server of PyPI. Uh, you can see there we're doing using Twine upload. So no longer the Python setup.py uh, as this upload. Uh, Twine is a modern alternative, which basically means that your uh, credentials are no longer being sent uh, clean over the wire. It's really uh, using HTTPS. And update, update the version again. And push the commits to the server and everything is correctly again. Uh, I'm going to change one thing to the change log, one moment. I have no idea what a super lacquer is about, but it's Dutch, <laughs> so it's good. Uh, one option that has been added, I guess, somewhere last year or whatever, is the, you can hardly see there, full release dash dash no dash input, which means I can just go look at whatever happens and our sanity check fails, which isn't supposed to happen, but that's a demo. Uh, at least if, uh, uh, okay, this is actually good, like if you are tired of just enter, 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 enter again. Uh, and are just interested in real failures, then you can uh, use this option or add it to a configuration file. And then it'll just press enter for you until it encounters maybe uh, an error. And you can do it uh, much faster if you want to. Uh, for me, I like to look at all the answers and questions that are there. Uh, there's documentation on zestrelease.read the docs. Uh, it might be a good read uh, to go through at some point, like the no input is there, and lots of other options. Uh, like your uh, home uh, slash uh, dot pypi dot rc, where you have your pypi credentials. Uh, you can add a zest releaser section, and say, for example, their uh, extra message is CI skip, which is uh, something to tell to Travis and Jenkins. To say, okay, yeah, don't run any continuous integration tests uh, now because this is just a very simple. Uh, we will add that to any uh, commit uh, message, which, yeah, the commit messages that are basically just uh, updating the version. 
So we'll read the documentation. There's lots of stuff about PyPI and how you can configure things. And it was, well, not visible here, but the, it was a new release today. It looks actively being maintained, even at the conference. And uh, my weblog, uh, I think a few months ago, there was a blog entry that has some more details about major updates. Uh, that's it. Have fun with it. Hello. I'm going to talk a bit about uh, ZOP, ZOP4. We can install Plon 5 on ZOP4, which is an experiment I played around a bit. Um, ZOP4 is the successor of ZOP2.13 uh, or 14, and it's actively being developed. Not, uh, there's not much activity, but some. And um, for example, if you look into the changes file, we see some bugs are fixed, some features are added, and uh, a lot of cleanup is done and uh, code restructuring. Yes, and uh, one thing which is a good, which is good, is that it uh, depends on new versions, for example, of top component and top interface. And Plon, which depends on top 2.13, has versions which are several years old. I mean, it's not usable at the moment because it's an alpha release and far from finished, but uh, I created a blip, uh, which, uh, which we just uh, closed with one fix because it was not uh, ready to adapt. And, um, but however, there's um, an experimental.zop4 package on the collective on GitHub. And the build out looks like this. Uh, I, I use this Plon CoreDev sources file and the versions file. And uh, from from the uh, top project, the sources and versions file, and just set everything to auto checkout. So all those source definitions are uh, actually checked out. And uh, we have to add some eggs, otherwise it won't work, and make some version fixes like persistent, and use a Z catalog uh, branch checkout, a specific one, because the newest Z catalog does not index none values. However, these are details. You can try it out. Um, the eggs, uh, the downloaded eggs are quite small because most of the dependencies are checked out in the source directory. That's a lot. And um, this here, this here is um, top four. Uh, top four, yes. And if I install a plone site, we have to wait a little bit. I'm sure many, many tests will break. But however, Plon can be installed and it works. For example, if you look into the admin interface, set set up. We can see that, yeah, that SOP4 is used. That's more or less all. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think we are done for today. See you tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs>